Hello my loves and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria. It is a blessing, it is an honor to be able to come here to you, greet you and shuffle the cards, pull the charts for the energy of the week ahead. Now, as you guys can see, I'm currently in my backyard. It's actually one of my many sanctuaries around my home. This sanctuary specifically is a little louder than most and that is because I've got chickens right behind me. One chicken in particular, his name is Tim Buck, he's a rooster, he's very vocal and as soon as he hears my voice he is inevitably going to scream and holler and try to get my attention because he knows that where I am there's usually a handful of treats around me so he wants those. Also, I have another chicken coming down the road as we speak. So, how are you guys doing? How are you feeling? There is a lot going on, astrologically speaking. I know you feel it. There's no way that you can't feel it. Most of this energy is coming from the fact that... <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what that was. That was a big bug. Most of this energy is coming from... <laughs> Pluto retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Neptune retrograde, Chiron retrograde, Venus retrograde, and Mercury retrograde will soon be joining in the mix of retrograde energy. If you're not careful, and if you don't know how to work with these energies, you will find that it feels like you're beating your head up against a brick wall. It will feel like a meltdown is inevitable. It will feel like nothing is working out in your favor. And this is why I'm one of your best friends because I will let you know exactly what's happening within these charts so that you know what to expect and you'll understand why it's even happening and what to do in these energies, okay? So go ahead and get cozy, grab an ice cold drink, which I would definitely benefit from here in Florida. It's been so hot here lately. Or if you're feeling super cozy, some hot tea or a matcha latte. I mean, the options are endless. Whatever it is that is going to feel good for you, go ahead and grab that. I'm going to go ahead and bless the deck because I will be shuffling as I'm pulling the charts and then I'll meet you in a few seconds so that we can go ahead and dive right in. Welcome to Bahati Life YouTube channel featuring Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. This is the space to ground, grow, and connect with magic and intention. May this video inspire you to come home to yourself and remind you of your own magic within. I hope this message reaches you with perfect divine timing. Now grab your favorite tea and let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, my loves. So as I said, Mercury is now retrograde. This happened officially August 23rd. Actually, so I'm filming this August 22nd. It will happen August 23rd, and we're gonna be feeling this until September 15th of this year. That's when Mercury will then officially go direct. Mercury, for those of you guys that don't know, Mercury is actually the planet that rules communication, contractual agreements, and also the tiny working bits and pieces that we find in our tech technology devices for example a cell phone or our laptops or even our cars mechanics transportation those are the energies that mercury actually rules and when this planet decides that it is time to no longer give all of its energy exerting into the forward movement of those things that I just mentioned, it then goes into retrograde motion where all the energy that it would normally go into pushing something forward now turns and goes internal. It begins to get more introspective. It ends up being more reflective and also you will find a change of pace, a change of heart, the energy begins to shift. Now, if you are someone who is exclusively focused on your own desires, your own ambition, your own will, the way that you want things to look like, the way that you want things to work out and how 
if you need that reassurance to let you know that everything is working out in your favor, this season, the next few weeks are going to be very, very tumultuous for you because Mercury retrograde is not moving in that timeline of in order for this to move forward, we can only do it this way. Mercury retrograde is the opportunity for us to pivot and change and to reflect in as many ways as we can so that we can factor in time to rebuild our energy, to replenish our energy, to find more inspiration, to fix anything that has been broken down, and to reassess, to reevaluate, to change our minds. For many of you guys, you're actually going to see this in people around you or even finding this energy within yourself where there's a change of heart, a change of plans, usually last minute or a time that is inconvenient. <laughs> That's just always how it ends up panning out. So it could, could show up in a change of plans, change of heart, or something that you are excited about, all of a sudden it falls apart, it falls through for reasons that may or may not make sense to you. This is something that you want to honor. Not only do you want to honor it, you want to factor it in. If there is a breakdown or a shift and a change of plans during Mer Mercury retrograde, you can pretty much guarantee and bet your mortgage that whatever this pivot is happening, this change is happening, it is absolutely for your highest and greatest good. If you don't bet on it, I will bet on it. Even though, again, you may not necessarily see the benefit immediately, do know that if there's a change of heart, a change of plans, a change of, and change in action, it is not only for your highest and greatest good, but anybody around, around who it's in their best interest to not show up, to, pay, to change again and pivot as needed, as necessary. Use this time constructively. So hopefully, if you are an old friend of the YouTube channel or you've heard me on TikTok or Instagram or any form of social media that I show up on, you would have already planned for the next few weeks of this month and the month of September to look like uh, a, lot of flexibil a, lot, a lot of flexibility in space and time and how we're using our energy. So if anything needs to change, you would already have had mentally prepared for it so that you can factor in some downtime as needed, maybe do something that works for you or invest some in something else elsewhere, not during Mercury retrograde season because again, everything is in, everything is in flux at that time. Like I said, if you are someone who is very focused on your own desires, your own wishes, and your way of thinking that this way is the only way, this is the only way to show up and do business, this is the only way to have a conversation with a partnership, this is the only way that this can be, if you're stuck in that way, you're going to find that you are not gonna fare well during Mercury retrograde transits, or any transits for that matter, because the planets are not doing this personally, they are following energy. If the energy is not in alignment, if it's not flowing, if it's not meant to be, or if it needs to pull in, that is something to respect, that is something to honor versus push past it and push beyond it. This will also show up in relationships when it comes to conflict or any type of lingering information or conversations that need to be had, anything that hasn't been completely dealt with, but maybe you swept it under the rug, are kind of saving it for a rainy day or wanting to talk about it any other time. This is a chance for those conversations and that connection to re-emerge, to resurface again. And you are going to feel a little enticed into that encounter, into that conversation. Once again, once more. If not for the second time around, maybe third, fourth, fifth, sixth, everyone's story is different. I'm not here to judge. I have a whole video, I have multitude of videos breaking down Mercury Retrograde. One more recent video that I just up uploaded is called Mercury Retrograde Survival in 2023. I will link it down below. It specifically talks about the energy that Mercury Retrograde, Mercury Retrograde rules, but also how this energy is going to be intentionally and specifically impacting us here during this, tra during this transit this time around. So I will again link it down below. Having said that, it's time for us to move forward with the intuitive portion of this video that I really wanted to share before we move on to the other transits that are standing out. I really have been getting a strong sense of change of path, 
or a deviation on how you were thinking that life would pan out or thinking of what is going to happen next. For some of you guys, you have been grounded and rooted in one area of your life for long enough that now you're starting to get bored or restless in that same role, in that same capacity. You're feeling the need to uproot, to pull out, and maybe even do a whole cathartic cleanse of the old life that you were living or the current life that you're living that you are going to be walking away from. This will feel scary to some, exciting and exhilarating to others. Either way, the change is going to be great. It's gonna be greatly felt. It will be something that feels unavoidable to you, that you sense it. You can sense the transformation, you can sense the evolution, and there will be a part of you who, who tries to dive in to understanding and seeking answers as to why and where are we going, where are the planets taking me, how are my ancestors guiding me, how am I being led? With that, I do wanna say that for those of you guys that are feeling the effects of that energy that I'm picking up on, but I'm also seeing in the astrological charts, I wanna encourage you to really take your time with this transition. Mercury retrograde, again, is such a beautiful blessing because it tells us to slow down. It tells us that we have time, that this time should not be rushed, and that all answers that we're seeking, we will eventually, inevitably find our way to those answers. Whether it be, how long can I sustain in this marriage? How long can I live in this neighborhood? Where, what other apartment or house am I going to live in? Am I gonna stay in the United States or move out of country? There are a lot of major lifestyle questions that are resurfacing during this time. And I wanna tell you that as strong as the feeling of transformation and evolution is felt within you, it's still something that will take, you wanna slowly peel back the layers of it, onions bit by bit, not to get to the root of it to change it, but to honor, acknowledge all the different ways that this will inevitably show up in your life. Because from what I can see is that it's not just one area. There could be a part of your life, for example, relationships, marriage, um, schooling, a major choice at, while you're in college, a breakdown in a relationship, the death of someone that is that you love. It could come from this trigger, but it's impacting a greater well of an energy that is happening within your life. And it will be the catalyst to major adjustments and changes that are going to be required of you moving forward. I say that not to freak you out, but to give you strength into understanding exactly what it is that you are feeling and sensing, to reassure you and to confirm that this energy is real, but also to empower you to not leap into making this happen because you feel it so strongly now. There's something about spiritual people, spiritually guided people, people who are spiritually protected, people who are highly intuitive, when they are led into a new season in their life, it's very important that we take our time as we transition into that. And even though you may be very gifted, even though you may be highly sensitive and picking up on all these different energies, it's not always a quick and easy, abrupt, I understand this and now I'm cutting everything out. Simply because, again, it's, it's not just your own energy that you're feeling, it's also the energy of a planet, of the entirety of the planet right now. Your moves, though, are integral to the health of our planet and our globe, and it's very important that you ease into this and not try to rush and force because you are a beacon of light, not only for yourself, but also to other people. So try to take your time as you walk through this. I do wanna say that this week, the sun is gonna be directly opposing Saturn. This transit is very, very important for you to understand because it's going to trigger the ego, self-identity. We're gonna be feeling this on the 27th. This is going to help you to understand to a greater degree and extent of how you're moving, of how others are moving, and if it's coming from a place of the ego or if it's coming from a space of direction and true love and light. This is hard to distinguish. Even the most spiritual people, we really need to sit down and sit back and and ask for further clarity and further confirmation or we can think that we know the answers, think that we know what's right, think that we know what's happening and then be misled. 
there's a lot of energies that sense sensitives and empaths and intuitives pick up on on the regular. So working on discernment is everything. Whether you are sharing those gifts with others or whether you're keeping them to yourself or whatever the case is. So I want to say that the sun opposing Saturn this week is going to reveal to you a lot about people's characters, about people's intentions, and even aspects within yourself. Are you moving from the shadow aspect of yourself? Are there certain things that you were fighting on? Is there a reason why you said yes or no to this? Is it coming from a healthy, healed place? Or is it coming from a part that needs to be forced? Even if you feel like your intention is coming from a nice place, I'm doing this for them, I'm doing this to help. That is that is probably could be true. I support that. However, sun opposing Saturn is going to show you through irritation, through irritability, through your own frustration, through your own internal beliefs. This is what I tried to do and this is what happened and like and then the judgment, the immediate immediate judgment that comes right after that will show to you what it is that you feel is in someone is in in their best interest versus moving from a space of higher love and light and what is good for all, including yourself, in that factor. Um, I will also say that for some of you guys, you are going to be especially even near to the Pisces full moon, which is going to be August 30th. You're going to be feeling the effects of the paths in your life that you have really, truly outgrown. This could be career choices, jobs, relationships, a way that you're living your life, things that you might have been avoiding, things that felt completely overwhelming to you, things that you don't even wanna look at, things that you don't wanna address. This full moon has a strong tendency of bringing all of that realization to the surface and three of swords here. For some of you guys, it's going to be a bit painful, but with that pain is the opportunity for tremendous, tremendous healing. Because um, August 27th with the sun directly opposing Saturn retrograde again, this is bringing back those parts of your life that have not felt combat compatible for you. Idealistically, you are honored in your dedication and your commitment to following through with an original commitment, but Energy will always speak and the divine always has the last word. And at some point, at somewhere in, in every single one of our journeys, there's a time where we have to kind of pivot, change, do different because our path is leading us in a different direction or leading us in a new way. And it can be really disheartening, but it can also be very liberating. For some of you guys, it's that initial step into this uncomfortable zone or this newness that is going to feel like freedom. It's gonna be very, very freeing. It's gonna be like sipping on a tea that brings you to full, complete awareness of how you've been living your life and now you're moving deeper with authenticity and alignment than ever before. So what, what happens with that is that there's certain things that you might have chose before that no longer match who and what you are now today, that's something to honor. You can mourn it, you can respect it, you can see how it contributed to the journey, but now moving forward, it's time for you to pivot, to change, to do different. We're definitely gonna be feeling this for our intuitives out there, especially around the full moon, the full moon falling in the sign of Pisces. Pisces is the sign that connects to the ethereal, to divine wisdom, to higher wisdom, knowledge, intuition, reading between the lines, sensing the energies around you and then knowing from a deeper place what is right and what is wrong for you and moving in according to that. For those of you guys that are in relationships, this will actually can trigger a lot of separation in those relationships, especially marriages, relationships that have been around for a very long time. Let's say you've known this person since you were in high school. They just, they're your best friend, or maybe you just guys have outgrown each other or whatever the situation is. These relationships, these connections are being reevaluated in a lot of ways, and that can be very, very difficult to stomach to digest, but your independence and your heart and your freedom, all of that is being supported here, as well as making sure that you're feeling good and not over compromising your path, your integrity, your hopes, your wishes, your desires, in order to stay honorable in a contractual agreement, whether it be marriage or a commitment you made to someone else. 
This could show up, like I said, in relationships. It can also show up in business partnerships and alliances. It's you knowing what is going to ultimately work out for you and be in your best interest. Having said that, the last transit that I want to share with you guys is on the 28th, Uranus going retrograde. As you guys know, Uranus is the planet of complete, unexpected changes, <laughs> usually for the better, but and it, it tends to be for the better, but things can be very shocking and it can be difficult to see the benefit and the blessing in it in the, at the time being because the radical, radical changes that are happening can be such a shock to your system. We are going to see this ooh, even more intensified as Uranus and Jupiter gain closer and closer together in a conjunction. We're going to see this in a really radical change in public officials and leaders. We're going to see this also in our government, economy, the economics, policy, spending, resources. These are going to be energies that are going to be undeniable and we have to address them. We can't wait any longer. So how this will show up in our in our world and the gover in the government or on the news is environmental issues for sure will be to the forefront. A need for leadership in taking control of advances in technology or problem or solution finding me me methods to help with resources on earth or from the earth. Last few videos that I've posted about things going on in our world, including government, politics, economics, um, established religion, leadership, etc., etc. I've gotten a few comments back as like, this is an astrology channel that doesn't have a role here. And astrology, for those of you guys that are unaware, does not exclusively explain your spiritual practice or energies or relationships. It goes very, very, very deep and, it, and it'll also cover every single aspect of human, of humanity and human life here on earth. Whether that be the breaking down of your health or the rebuilding of your health to the diet and lifestyle that's best for you, medical astrology, healing the body. These are things that I, I share in my astrology readings. We, people who have had chronic ailments and issues and cannot find a solution when they go to the doctor will find an answer when I pull the chart from them in 30, 40 minute session. We found, we found a solution or at least an explanation and what to do now to alleviate some of the pain and suffering that is that they're going on in their life. Also, when it comes to government and politics and even debt, or sex, those are things that can be broken down within the astrology chart and pinpointed. When these energies of these planets start to hyper-focus their energy in that area, we will absolutely, without a doubt, begin to see those things trending because that's where the energies of the planets are currently sitting. So astrology is not limited to our spiritual practice, our spiritual beliefs, or energies in, in the general form of like, okay, today, today, your car is gonna break down. It covers everything literally everything. So I really want to provide clarity for those of you guys that have not actually seen the astrology guides going so deep, but I do go deep. I've studied astrology almost my entire life. I'll continue studying it. I will continue learning it. I will always say that I'm always learning even now. So those issues of government, politics, spending, leadership, changes in leadership, revolts, revolutions, all those types of things show up in the charts. We can predict it, or I can predict it, down to a week, a week or so, of when we'll see these shifts happening. All on top of that, my intuition is very sharp and I'll get visions on top of that. So um, that's what you can find here on my YouTube channel, always a constant, and my accuracy has been 99.9%. Not only are you going to see these major radical conversations showing up in the news all, all across the globe, not just in the United States or in Canada or France, wherever it is that you're tuning in, we're gonna be seeing this all over the globe. I do wanna tell you that some of the conversations that are being bubbled up 
or are brewing right now are not things that we the public always see but just because we don't see it doesn't mean that it's not happening and I've been seeing a lot of that within the charts so we'll we'll see that impacting and being influenced or showing its influence as the days unfold usually around full moon energies or lunar eclipses and solar eclipses tend to reveal the most information of what's been happening under the radar when it comes to your personal life there's this again this hyper focus on freedom but also simplification of life there's a lot of things that many of us have been bringing into our day-to-day -day that do not serve us any longer it makes sense why we were able to partake in them or desired to partake in them but there's a simplification in your life and selling your stuff or wanting to give away or donate there's something about being of service from a different place instead of achieving all these things you want to things meaning like goals that you might set, set for your business or for yourself your closet expanding with luxury goods um, a bigger house a bigger car there's a lot of simplification and going back to what is reliable and what it is that you actually need and investing in those things because you only need one or you if you're gonna have something you need what works that's Uranus transit through the sign of Taurus and Jupiter transit through the sign of Taurus it's not about more 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 it will be about I want more wisdom I want more experience I want to see the world I want ho higher quality of living I want what's reliable and consistent and solid for me in a world that feels like it's actively breaking down so that will be a, sh a, a pivot and a shift in your own priorities that you will find here which is really really beautiful and stunning last thing I want to talk about is relationships relationships are under the microscope right now Part of this is because of Venus retrograde. Venus rules relationships, love, aesthetic, what we're attracted to, and what us what makes us feel good or what makes another person feel good. When this planet is retrograde, especially in the sign of Leo, it's hard for us to stay committed or stay exclusive or stay desiring something that you've lost love for or you've lost attraction for. So if this relationship doesn't have longevity, if you are finding that there's more harm than good or more conflict and stress and tension, you will find that towards the end of this transit, you're going to want to let it go, release it into the cosmos and say that you tried and maybe even open your energy up to things that feel like a better match for you, whether that be sharing your, your energy, your heart, your time and your energy with someone else or just pouring it into yourself. Last thing, I know that I said this is the last thing, but I mean this. Family, family relationships that normally would feel like a sense of obligation and duty are things that are also under a microscope right now. You realize that just because we're blood doesn't mean that I owe you anything. Or the family dynamic here is not something that is, is serving me or something that I'm interested in involving myself in a little further so for some of you guys instead of showing up for family reunions you might find yourself booking travel or putting that money into yourself that feels good for you even though it may disappoint or deviate from the expectations of other people who feel like this is where you should be this is how you should show up and the fact that you didn't do that how dare they okay so I hope that makes sense my loves I do want to invite you to Bahati Love Notes subscription it's a five dollar membership you're only billed one time a month, it's $5, and I'm shuffling every single day or every other day. Some weekends I do take off in order to pour into myself and my own energy, but it's available for you. We do dive deep, and oftentimes I'll take your questions and answer them on the more public forum. I'm also hoping to soon go live with those sessions, but we're gonna find a time that works best for all of us. So I will link it down below. Until then, thank you guys so much for tuning in, for hanging out with me. I hope that this message was good for you. I hope that it served you. There is a squirrel who is hard, hardcore parkouring right above my head. So cute. Um, and until then, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.